Hello, everybody. Welcome and welcome back. I am Master Friend. If you don't know me, I have been appointed a mentor in the crypto lifer, crypto lifer community. And I just help some people on their journey. And I hope you find some value in my experience. It's really important that you have a pen and a notepad anytime that I'm chilling with you because I'm a, I, I give you guys absolute bomb gold diggity stuff. And try and be in a quiet place so you can be undisturbed if it's possible. I know people who have big families, it's kind of hard to do, but. Um, yeah, we're going to go over risk management is going to be the theme for this lecture. If you are struggling, if you're a losing trader, if you find that price comes against you as soon as you go in it's my hopes that this will strike some nerves and i just do a basically no 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 uh i always say it politely you know what i mean you know just the straightforward approach tough love style no sugar coating and you will see these things materialize in your lives as long as you spend time focusing on them and practicing. If you're losing, there's something that you're not doing that you're not focusing on. And I, and I promise you that that's risk management. The Holy Grail to trading and being a profitable trader over time is risk management. That's the only thing separating you from being a unprofitable trader and frustrated to a profitable trader and frustrated. Now I have a whole nother lecture on my YouTube about this. It's the trading psychology and advanced swing trading it's free it's on my youtube it's timeless and you'll find a lot of value in there so if you haven't checked that out put it on 2x speed and again bring a pen and a notepad and be undisturbed because the stuff that i give you guys just repeats and you can make a lot of money with it So you can see just in this series of price action that there's a lot of movement up and down. Now, I want to start off by saying to the new people in the group, Sam and I, we do not compete, okay? If him and I disagree on a direction, it's very important that you pay attention to him, okay? The way that we interact with price is different although it's kind of the same thing but when you hit a certain level of trader you're going to understand that there is no right and wrong there is only profitable okay there's a lot of up and down movement in here and this happens a lot of the times and the reason why i bring this up is because eventually we will get in your way and that's not a bad thing. We don't want you attached to us. We want you dependent. Sorry, independent. We don't want you dependent. So, for example, if Sam was bullish on the market, which he was, and I seen price wanting to gravitate towards this level here, and we made a swing high up in here. And I say, okay, I'm short. And I, you know, I don't go into much detail. I just say I'm I'm short on the market. You know, I'm targeting here. You know, people will say, oh, you're counter trading Sam. Well, I can find a short play inside of his overall long. And it can be the exact opposite. He can find a short play in my overall long. Because his model is really fluent throughout the time frames and, and price action. 
that he can take multiple scalps in in both directions inside of maybe my swing long that I'm playing. So, for example, I've been long since the bottom here. And he was able to find many shorts in here intraday. But my overall long still played out. So, you can... Event, I know a lot of you guys want to use us for signals and how to get into a trade, but I'm going to teach you how to lose properly, okay? Because this is the boat you're missing. Risk management and protecting the purse. Okay, this is, I promise you, you spend time with this and understand what I'm saying here you're going to see a huge difference in who you are as a trader. Okay, when you're going into a trade and I'm saying risk 1%, some of you guys are going, I'm going to do that and I'm going to put 1% of my openable equity. That's not risking 1%. That's not a 1% risk. Okay, that's a 1% margin that's how much you're using in the trade is your margin so we're going to refine what you're doing here in deciding how much you're going to use for margin so my account size is $85,000 and this is a demo account I started this with 50 grand when I started teaching here and it's just a sea of green I guess they delete that data after a while, but where's my all time? Anyway, my available, I think my total equity in this account is $85,000. So my risk is 1% of that account, which is $850. So how are you going to figure out Let's see here. Kind of new to these tools. I would like the position tool here. It's got it. I know Sam brings it up all the time. Where's the ruler tool? Now oh, we'll go here. We'll go here. Okay, that's this section of price action. So this bottom that we got here, that's 786. And we were targeting this high here. Okay, so where's our stop loss? Well, we had it refined in the four hour time frame, and it was this low right there. Okay, so this trade gives us a 4.57 reward per risk. So in other words, if I was risking $1, I'd be getting four and a half out of this trade in return. Okay, so let's look at the stop loss percentage. It's 2.57%. Okay, so let's go to our formula here. Okay, so our risk is $850. So I'm going to bust out my math book here. And you can feel free to follow along. $850. That's, that's my risk. Now I'm going to multiply that by 100. Why? Because I'm risking 100% of my risk. Okay. Now I'm going to divide that by my stop loss, which is going to be 2.5, right? And then, so I need $34,000 for this trade. Okay, that's that's my position size right there. Now, if I'm going to use any amount of leverage, this is where it gets a little tricky because you want to divide that sum here 
which is 34 grand by your leverage. Okay, so we got $34,000 position size. Now let's say I want to use, what do you guys use? I don't know, 10, 15. Friend, you have to click trading view chart in Max. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So let's divide $34,000 by 15 leverage. Okay, so this gives us a $2,266 margin. Okay, so that's how much I'm going to use with the leverage that I've chosen. Okay, so watch what happens here. Okay, you all can see MEX, right? Wild berries, you can see MEX here. Just to make sure. Yes, okay. So, what was it? 15x leverage. Okay, so I'm going to use 2,000. 266. Now look at my margin down here. Okay. Is 150. Uh, no, sorry. Sorry. 34,000. Excuse me. There we go. So it, of course, USDT is a little bit calculated, just slightly a little bit different, but you can see how my $2,266, it's near there. It's 2,273. So only like, you know, 13 bucks off or whatever, or sorry, the other way, nine bucks off, but still, it's still in that range. So my position size is $34,000 still. Okay. That's you guys have to understand that leverage is just you borrowing from the broker so you don't have to use 34 grand. Okay, now, if I crank this up to 200x leverage, I want you to notice that um, 34,000 USDT, that's the quantity at 200x leverage. Now I'm only using $176 in margin, but my position size always stays the same. Okay. I know I, I can feel that I lost a couple of you here. So we're going to start over. Okay. Just real quickly, risk times a hundred divided by stop loss equals your position size, which was $34,000 at 15 X leverage. That's $2,266. If you use more leverage, if you use more leverage, your position size is still 34 grand, but instead of using $2,266 or 70, whatever that was there, I'm using $176 in margin. So when you guys see my purple students using a lot of leverage, their position sizes are tiny. And you guys are like, oh my goodness, look at this 200x leverage trader. He's killing it. His position size is appropriate for his account. Okay. He's not going, okay. And look at when I type in 34 grand here, right? People be going, okay, yeah, I got 85 grand in my account. I'm just going to use about 50% open long, bang, liquidated. Well, Master Friend said to use, you know, risk 2% of my account. So I'm just going to, Go to 2% here, margin 347, position size $3,300, open long, bang, wrecked. That's not that's not what I'm teaching. I'm, I'm teaching you here how to refine this, the things that you're not paying attention to, which is this right here. I promise you. If you focus on this, you will see exponential growth. If you don't have a very big account and it's very humble, I don't know what to do for you. That's trading. Okay. You heard Sammy maybe getting into prop firms and funding. And there's some 
things going on. Now, don't let that entice you because believe me, I'm in the world and there are people that are losing their lives. There are people that are on their 800th evaluation and only just getting a payout that's very small. Okay. Don't let funding entice you. If you don't have a very, very strategic, refined plan, back tested, and you feel comfortable with, and you don't care. This is the thing, okay? When you finally have a model and a plan, you're not going to care if you lose. And I'm going to teach you that in a moment, but let's focus on this first. You're risking 1% of your total equity per trade. So in other words, you need, if my, if my risk is $850, that means that no matter what my stop loss is from this low or this low or this low or this low, it doesn't matter what low it is, my risk always must equal that $850, no matter what, okay? So let's do one more little example, okay? That stop loss was 2.5%, always round down. Okay, now let's do another example here, okay? Now, because I really, really trust my model, and I know that Bitcoin's kind of a dork sometimes and it can be really angry and it can come all the way down into this wick, just like this bugger right here. Okay, you see how it came all the way down, but that swing low held, right? It can do that here too. And it can grab all these stops and then rip up. So because I know this, but I trust my model so much, I'm going to play a one-to-one -one R. Okay. Now my stop loss is 12%. When we'll go 12 point, let's just go 12.5%. We'll round down there. Okay. So now my position size is going to be entirely different. Okay. So my risk, 850 times 100 divided by my stop loss, which is 12.5%. So just go 12.5 equals do not put the percent after you'll steal you mess that all up make sure you got that in your notes it's now sixty eight hundred dollars that's my position size okay so now i'm going to come into here i'm going to write in sixty eight hundred dollars okay now it does not matter how much leverage i'm using okay it does not matter I know that my position size equals $6,800. I can use any amount of leverage and it's never going to change. In other words, it doesn't matter if I'm using 15 or 200X, I'm always going to have a $6,800 position size. This just determines how much I'm borrowing from the broker for this position. So let's say I'm using 200X. My position is now $35. And that means that if it comes down for this low here, where I have my stop there and I lose the trade, I will lose um, my risk, which was, what was my risk? $850. I'm not going to lose the 6,800. Okay, I'm going to lose just my risk, which is 850 so how does how does that work out? How does that math work out? Because the movement against you still must equal that 1% of your account. Okay, so the more the the wider the stop loss, the less you're going to use in the trade. The tighter the stop loss, the more you need to use in the trade. So if you're playing intraday price action, and your stop loss is under a percent, you're likely going to have to full port your account. You can't even risk the full amount. So you're going to have to borrow from the broker and that's what leverage is for. All right. Now, refined risk management plan. Okay. This is another thing that is not talked about and not a lot of people really know about. But when you start to get a very, very respectable account, you can reduce your risk by 50% when incurring a loss. And you turn your risk back up when you've recovered 50% or more of the previous loss. So in other words, if you were risking 1% of your account, you took an L, 
you, you'd now be risking half a percent. If you made back half of that previous loss, you can turn your risk back up to 1%. If you lose that next trade and you incur two losses, you are now risking 0.25%. Okay, you're, cut, you're cutting your risk back every single time. What does this do for you and why is this important? Because you don't want your equity curve to look like this because this equals a blowout every single time, okay? You want your equity curve to stair step. You want the plateau of losses to be very minimal and everybody takes an L, okay? Even as, as good as my methods are, and you guys have seen it in front of your faces, I still have losing streaks. This helps my account stay in net positive all the time, meaning that I've got a series of higher highs and higher lows in my equity curve. For me to get a lower low in my equity curve is very, very, very rare. And I do share those on my funded accounts when I've passed evaluations and stuff like that. And when I've, if I've blown out any, I don't mind sharing that and I've done it. Um, so you want your equity curve to be nice and stair-steppy, really smooth. You take a big loss, then you take a smaller loss, then you take a smaller loss than that, then you take an even smaller loss and it plateaus really nicely. And then one of those is going to hit. This is the secret to this plan here. You, this only works if you have a model. If you don't have a model, if you are still chasing price, if you are a breakout trader, you are guaranteeing your own demise. The market and the people who capitalize on beginning traders, suckers, who trade live funds before they're ready, okay, you're, you're marked. Just as a beginner right off the hop, they're counting on you to be in here. Okay? So you're going to have to be a little bit more strategic and a little more ninja about how you're going to operate yourself as a trader from now on. Okay, now I'm going to show you the power of this. Trader A who risks 1% per trade takes a losing streak of five trades and his net P&L for the month is negative $5,000. Now this is risking 1% with a $100,000 account. Okay, refined trader B started his risk with 1% and reduced half each losing trade. What do you notice about those two numbers? That this one is less than half and they took the same amount of trades. Okay, this is how you can also spare mental capital. Now, let's say you have an account of $5,000. Let's say your account is five grand and you're not really applying any sort of risk management. You're just kind of winging it. You're just, you're, you're, you're going, okay, I'm just going to close this trade because my $5,000 account is now $250 negative in this one trade. So I'm going to shut it down now. Well, you've lost way more than 1% of a $5,000 account right? You've now lost 5% of that in one trade. Bang. And my math could be off here. No, 50, 50 bucks. <laughs> or wait, no, two, yeah, exactly. 250 bucks. So you're down like a lot in your $5,000 account. Now, do you have, do you have it in you to keep going? Or are you stressed out now? You lost a large percent in one trade of your account and you're, and you're upset. You're already upset. 
So what's your mental capital? Let's say you lose $1,000 out of your account. And your account went from five grand to four grand. And now you're like, what is going on? And you're, ch you're tripping now. That that's your mental capital. You might have an account size of five grand, 50. But do you have a mental capital size of $2,500? I guarantee you don't. I guarantee if you lose half of your account, you're pissed. Now with a refined or just the just with the risk management plan, you are able to take a hundred lose losses in a row before you blow your account. If you're risking one percent of your account, obviously you have a hundred trades before you blow it. Only if you stick to the model and a plan. Okay, so this is the absolute goat. Okay, this is what the pros are doing, and. This is what you're not doing. I, I, I guarantee it. Okay. So take your screenshots as uh, if you have to go back. And we're going to go over some price action. Now, I haven't really figured out if I'm going to do the money printer or not. Not a lot of people are, especially the new guys, are really familiar with the money printer model. And maybe I will go over it. It is my gift to all of you. Okay, this sucker repeats constantly. And I'll, I guess, yeah, I'll go over it with you. Um, But there's also like people like shapes and they like drawing things on their chart and they like visuals and stuff. So I'm kind of, you know... But let's go in, let, let's do it. Let's go into the one minute time frame. And I'm going to show you how simple trading can be. Now, it's not going to be easy, especially not at first, but it does get simple, especially with me. Now, I really, really like separating my days because it helps give me a visual and this indicator just plots them on my chart so I don't have to draw them by hand, which is great. I'm just going to go back as far as I can. There. Now, for what I do, everything must be set in UTC negative four New York. This is the time I use to trade. Any any time you ever see me messaging about a time, it's always going to be in New York time. Always. Okay. So most of you guys are in New York. Now you can plot this line that I'm going to show you at 1 a.m. And you can do the same thing if you live on the other side of the pond, okay? So typically at 7 a.m., I'm looking for something really, really, really specific. Okay, now you guys all love your visuals. So I'm going to turn on the RSI. Um, you can turn on other stuff and you can study this for yourself. But um, essentially what I'm going to teach you here is how to hunt a bull flag and how I teach my students how to do it. And this will be in concert with the money printer model. Okay. At 7 a.m., I want to define a, an accumulation range of sorts. I, I want to see price pretty much do nothing and make equal lows and equal highs. So I identify that range like so. And so I'm looking for a stop hunt. Now, people ask me all the time, Master Vren, how do you know that it's the stop hunt? Because it made my model. The money printer model is in every single bottom and every single top of every single candle. All you have to do is expand the information and you will get the money printer model. That one. If you can spot this, 
It's game over. You win. But you have to understand that all these cycles are time-based. Okay, and I've given you a lot right there. But this day here is... I start my days at midnight. Okay, you can agree or disagree with me, but that's what I do. So this is my beginning of the day. So I'm going to mark out that opening price. That's right there. If I'm bullish on the day, I want to be buying at or below the opening price at midnight EST. And I'm going to be using that as a target. So the fact that 7 a.m. is trading down first is perfect. So this is exactly what I want to see. I want to be a long buyer below my opening price. And I'm going to target that as a pay the trader. So I'm looking for something really specific in here. First, I want to see a divergence. Okay, so there's Divi. And now I don't look for this. I don't have any of this on my charts. It's just to help you guys. I see this Divi in the candlesticks. I promise you, it, it looks like hocus pocus hindsight, but we played it. We play a lot of these all the time. So there is my money printer model. Okay, you see this little swing high right here? You see how it was broken violently by that? Price action, this is just basic trend analysis, okay? When you've got a series of higher lows, sorry, lower highs and lower lows, once you break trend, you want to see it snap through a swing high and then you've broken trend. And then you want to see a retracement either to a 786 or the SR flip. I personally made it a rule that I only take the 786 retracement, okay? I, that's just my rule, and this is a crude depiction, but that's what it looks like. Okay, so I it's very important that we break trend. That's the that's the first well second thing. First thing is stopping out all these double bottoms right here because they see it as buying pressure. <laughs> so price then makes divergence. Great. That means okay. So Sam says this often: divergence is just market makers doing a stop hunt. I couldn't agree more. And so we've broken trend here. Now we've got a swing low created at the 786 retracement there. Okay. Now, sometimes it's going to be rude. You got to allow for some coloring outside the lines and that's fine. But look at the willingness the price wants to go higher there. It's time for price to get its butt moving. Okay. I promise you between 7 and 11 a.m. You will find a model in here for you to apply your risk management plan to, okay? I, I promise you, it's there. It's there every single day. And there is something for you to capitalize on here, but you're going to have to show a military degree of patience after you practice and knowing when to quit. People just don't know when to quit. Okay, so now you've got a cup and you've got a handle. So now you've got your bull flag here. Yeah, you could even say that was it. Okay, you got the 21 curving up. Everything's looking cool. The 200 SMA above the market. Everything's looking great. You got your cup. You got your handle. You've got your SR flip here. Uh, we attacked the high of that box there before retracement. We'll just take that off of there. This repeats every single day. At the same time, every single day. I promise you, there is something here for you in this time span. Okay. So for me, I'm trying to catch the low of the day and then ride it to near the high of the day. And it's it's not our jobs to catch the lowest low or the highest high of the day. We just want something in here. Okay, so let's go. Okay, well, we got our cup and handle. And we made a swing low here. Now, if you don't know what a swing low is, I'll go into it in a little bit. You probably are not familiar with how to identify one correctly. And we'll solve that issue right away. So we're taking our long tool. And we'll post it there. There's your stop loss. It's under 1%. So you're likely going to have to full port this puppy or get some leverage. And we're going to target the midnight opening price there's a lot of sensitivity here a price action really really enjoys dangling around it kind of like support and resistance 
I'll explain why in a bit, okay? So there is a trade. There's a nine reward per one risk. So in other words, you want to be making $9 per the $1 you risked. And this was an absolute banger trade. Okay, you played your bull flag. You didn't need the 786. You waited for this. You were very patient. You waited for your flag to materialize. And then she did it. Okay, so if I was risking $850, it would be 850 times 100 divided by my risk, which is point uh, 6%. And don't press the percent, <laughs> just press 0. 0.6. So this is equaled 141,667, we'll say. We'll round up. And hilarious because I don't have $141,000 in my account, right? I only got 85 grand in here. So I got to go 141,000. That's too much. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So let's just go, let's just put it on one, right? We're, we're just going to go like that. And then it'll say, I don't have enough money. It'll say, you don't have enough money, dude. And so... I don't know what happened, but I've only got available. Did I open their position? No. Why does it say I only have 60 grand in there now? I don't know. Anywho. Oh. Well, that's funny. What happened to all my money? Where's my demo bucks? Oh, right, because I had, oh, exactly. If I used less leverage, I, I hadn't borrowed anything from Max, right? Okay, anyway, back to one or two X leverage. I don't have enough money to open up this position, so I have to borrow leverage, and I still got, I still need, what, 141,000, and we'll just go like that, 141 grand. I don't have enough money, so I'm going to have to borrow, and I like to just max out the leverage. Why? Because I'm not scared of losing a trade. It's still going to equal 1%. It doesn't matter how much leverage you're using. This bugs everybody out. And when I see people go, holy moly, you just using high leverage. It's just like, yeah, but I'm positioned accordingly. I still going to use 141 grand. So my um, margin, so 200x, 141,000. So my margin would be $733 times that by 200 and I got my $141,000. Crazy, right? And I'd still only be risking if my stop hit that 850 bucks. But I need a, my my because I'm in the 1 minute and my position is so tiny, I need to borrow to 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 you know rock such a tight stop loss. Now, watch what happens if I do this. Now, it's 2. Points, we'll say 2.7%. Okay, so now I'm only making a two to uh, to one, and that's fine. High strike rate kicks butt, okay? Forget risk reward for now. Just get a high strike rate. A one-to-one -one R is beautiful if you've got an 80% strike rate, and of course, you've got to be waiting for your model. Now, if I was using such a wide rock and stop, I would just do the exact same formula, 800, or sorry, 800, and fifty dollars times a hundred divided by two point seven, and now I need thirty one thousand four hundred and eighty one dollars for the trade instead of one hundred and forty some thousand dollars. So that's this is where you're missing the boat is how much to use in a position for how much risk you're putting up per trade. Okay, and that one hit like gangbusters, by the way. So your model. In, in this time span here will materialize. I promise you. Now, sometimes you're not going to get a big phenomenal range. It's not going to just moonshot or dump for you. Sometimes it's just going to do nothing. Okay. And I tip my hand to you guys. I tell you when these days are going to do nothing in the 99 chat. I'm, I'm telling you it's this day. Wait till this time to trade. And a lot of people follow. Some people don't. And 
I see them and maybe some people don't see, you know, that I've posted. But um, if not, that's unfortunate. And there are times when I'm incorrect and price will just be very clean and it will moon. And those days I don't care. Okay, when when I'm expecting terrible trading days, like let's say a banking holiday, right? We all know banking holidays just chop around and do nothing. Okay, that means I'm taking the day off too. And if it decides that it wants to freaking moon, then I don't care. I don't feel like I've missed out because the markets are always moving. And they're never going to stop, at least not for now. Okay, so Tuesday, here's a good example of a day where it just didn't want to do anything. Now, did it follow the rules? Yeah, it did. It followed the rules beautifully. 7 a.m., there's your stop hunt, there's your money printer, and brum, there's your bull flag after. It didn't give the measured move in this bull flag, but there was something. There was something in there. Was there divergence? Of course there was. Everything's there. Okay. And I guess this measured move would actually be like up here. No, but there was something, especially if you followed the rules. You're just waiting for price to stop people out. And while you're saying it's selling pressure, this is going down now. You're posting to social media. You're in the Discord. It's dumping. It's tanking. And then it snaps in your face and you're going, what is going on? This is what it is to be strategic. Okay, you're waiting for this. And this is for your notes. Your most dynamic sustained price runs are going to come out of a stop hunt. While you're, while you're in FOMO mode, it's going to reverse right in your face 90% of the time. So you've got this stop hunt and then it snaps and breaks market structure right there, right? And then it starts retracing. I call this the max pain. Because that should have bounced from the 786. And again, you've got to allow for some coloring outside of the lines here. Crypto is kind of like a feral asset, like, you know, just like a feral cat. It, it just, it just, it, it'll bink you. And it gets me all the time too, but I could identify that bull flag there and, you know, count on divergence to do its thing. Is there any? Well, there's that swing low down here. And then there's this larger swing up here. Yeah, that's Divi. Okay, and it showed you a willingness to want to go up. It was just being really rude before it wanted to come back up to our box. Remember, identify the box. Right there, there's your box. All right, there's another box right here. It's doing the same thing. This is all price does, by the way. It makes boxes, takes one side, and then rips for the other. Okay, so identify your boxes. People will see this as a bear flag, double top. There's liquidity up here, and that's what we're targeting. <laughs> okay, so there's something for you every day. Now, again, there it's not my... I, I don't want to encourage you to trade every single day, okay? But when you know exactly what you're looking for, you will eventually just want it to be perfect. You will think scalping is lame, and you will just want some nice dynamic price runs. So, oh, this is for your notes. Tight range days bring large range days. So in other words, if you've got a nice choppy day and it didn't really do much, you can expect a nice expansion the following day. Okay, another tight range day, even though this was a large range within the day because we closed near the open. So that makes it a compressed day or tight range but this one following the rules as well, okay? You've got 7 a.m. and you stop hunted to the upside first, okay? So all we're looking for is a break in market structure, right? So 7 a.m., bam, plot that on your chart. When you wake up in the morning and you're waiting for price to stop hunt and you're looking for your model here. Now, because we're above the open, personally, I would be looking for a short back down into here or that pool of liquidity right there. Okay, why? Because this is a big giant bull channel and people would be like buying pressure. Their stops would be here. Their stops would be also right here. Okay, so this would be pay the trader style, this double bottom. We'll get into more liquidity stuff later on, especially if you're, yeah, 
going to stick around for a while. You'll, you'll see some cool stuff. Now, this one was annoying. I will give it to you. This one was super annoying. This one was what I call the type three. And this was the SR Flipsky poo. But look at how it rose up into these buy stops here that rose up and did a stop hunt three times. There's your three drives pattern. So everybody's really bullish now. And it just snaps, okay? And once it showed that willingness, it broke market structure. It was in a little baby uptrend here, but it snapped and broke market structure. Now, where's your model? Well, there's a bear flag right here. There's one here, there's one here, there's a double top right here, there's a bear flag. There's something in here for you to capitalize on, okay? Something. And then there's this larger bear flag here, okay? So if you just go outside, think outside the box here, You've got your double bottom down here and your double top up here. So there's your range. You went and ate all the people that were short on the range, tricked all the traders into breaking out, and there's your money printer model calling out the daily top of the day. Again, bam. Right in the time frame that I teach you, price will do this every single day, bullish or bearish, it does not matter. price this was uh unemployment claims and we were looking for some violence to come out of here so price then digs down we made an inverted head and shoulder here kind of a really short head but ended up ripping out of the discount nonetheless now look at this larger bull flag here okay price starts breaking out and all the bull flag traders have now moved their stops from here up up in here because that's support now Price then comes and takes them, does a stop hunt, and I'm, I promise you, okay, this is a constant, and this is for your notes. Wait 30 minutes after a economic news driver is released to hunt a setup in New York session. And we'll go over that in a little bit. So Price then does a stop hunt. This one was 8.30 a.m., the news driver and you can see they were just wickedly after um the um the shorts the news driver just launched price right at 8 30 a.m that's signature okay so you're waiting till about nine there's nine a.m price breaks market structure it trades down money printers on down bam that's a trade okay you're shutting it down now if you were waiting if you were bullish you're not longing above opening price. You're waiting for below opening price. So maybe you turtle soup these guys and you just buy that. That takes some conviction, <laughs> admittedly. You, you got to really have a good understanding of which way the price is going to want to go for the day. Um, but nonetheless, price then takes the equal lows out here. Everybody chasing this bull flag right here. Wham! eats them so that's a stop hunt that's an obvious stop hunt now while people are all screaming selling pressure and trading the sr flip there's your bull flag right there while everybody is missing the boat and ignoring what people call the v-shape recovery inverted head and shoulder there's the bull flag right there and it just soars price okay and then you top out oh not quite yet bang look at that that stop hunt right there, just remember I said, your most dynamic sustained price moves, the ones you don't have to question if you're in profit or not, <laughs> come from a stop hunt. Tight range days bring large range days. Large range days bring tight range days. The weekend, okay? Does that look like something that you want to be a part of? And a lot of you are not going to like me for this. But if you're trading weekends, this is why you're losing your money. This right here, you, you're not equipped enough to trade this. It's a seek and destroy profile. Now you have to expect that this is going to happen. So what's a seek and destroy profile? It's where you make equal lows, run them out, and then make equal highs and then run them out. It's really not that hard to understand. It's going to look like selling pressure. People are going to chase it and then it's going to reverse in their faces. If you have this expectation that price is going to do that, you're, you can trade these weekends, okay? You can do very well trading them. Now, while everybody's all emotional and trading weekends, 
the market is doing what we call creating sentiment. Okay. And sentiment meaning that it's going to encourage both bulls and bears to start developing an analysis and engaging with the market on, you know, Sunday into Monday open. And it's likely going to wipe them both out like it did here. Okay. It's, uh, it's just another accumulation range. So we treat it as such, right? Friday into Saturday, it made a box. There's the box. And I mean, it was up even a bit more here, right? And then what did it do? It took one side of the box, then went for the other. And then came right back up for the other side of the box, then slammed down, then goes back up. And this is what I mean about finding trades inside of trades. In both directions. So this one doing the same thing, right? Open high, low and close. London made that stop hunt. I, I, when London makes the stop hunt, I'm not really interested in New York. And I hope you can understand and see why for yourselves. It's really lethargic. It's a lot of up and down. It's not a lot of fun. Okay, another idiot box here. <laughs> we, we use that term loosely. I hope nobody's offended, but that's kind of what we call it. And I didn't mean to say that actually. But here's another box where, you know, people are got their stops here and their stops here and price goes bam, bam, bam. So let's take a look at 7 a.m. It's Monday. We're looking for a nice trade. If you're looking for a long or a short, it kind of worked out either way here. But here, there's your turtle soup long, equal lows, bull flag slams for them. And makes divergence and trades back on up. There's a little bull flag there. There's one there. Right in between the time that I show you, the price will move every day. Okay, now sometimes your trades can last till like 4 p.m. Like you don't always have to play a 3 to 1 R, but you can leave a runner. And sometimes they last till 4 p.m. Sometimes they don't. All right. And then, of course, this Tuesday... Nice little range there. And look at, same thing. Sometimes that stop hunt can be set 6 a.m. When you're looking for your stop hunt, okay, just take a little peeky-poo at what happened on the left-hand side there. Because sometimes it can be 6 a.m. The 7 to 11 is not objective, okay? Meaning that there's some wiggle room. You can go 6 till 12. Okay, and uh, there's your stop hunt. I mean, there's a nice bull flag there after this stop hunt, and there's the money printer in there. There's the money printer right in here, and money printer is on way on up out of here, by the way. And then look at nice large range closing near the high of the day. Beautiful. This one here was a short day, seven a.m. Trades up. There's the money printer. There's your bear flag stage two, and boom. I love that. And this is for your notes. You're going to get at typically two of these beautiful, beautiful AMD moves a week, typically. Okay. Now, this is the part, and you're going to want to timestamp this for 3.53 p.m. Okay. I'm going to teach you how a candlestick is born. And hopefully, totally demolished any sort of doubts that these candlesticks are butt noses. This is the life cycle of a candlestick. Okay, we're going to choose a 24-hour cycle to investigate. And this is so that you can take this knowledge and go and study this for yourself. Okay. This is what I teach my private students and my leverage masters. And it's in concert with the money printer model and how I catch the low or high of the day and ride it to the low of the day or near the or to the close or near the low of the day this is how i do it 
if I'm bearish on the day because maybe we're in a premium, maybe we just took liquidity in a higher time frame, whatever gives me the idea that I'm bearish, and I put this line here because the yellow line hides it. So I just put that down a bit. Okay, I'm marking out the open, and if I'm bearish, do I want to be selling short down here? No, I don't. I want to be selling short wherever people's stops are. So there's the box there, and we rock it to the upside at 7 a.m. So I'm going to try and be a short seller at or near the high of the day. So price then makes my model here. You've got a break in structure, just like I teach you, very simple, basic trend analysis. It then rides back up for the lower high and then does the same thing here. Same thing here, same thing here. And then finally, SR flipping the midnight New York time price, by the way, something for you to mine in there and then slamming down for a discount. So what does this all mean and how do I make money with it, master friend? Just tell me how to get into a trade. Well, if you study this, you will be able to tell yourself how to get into a trade. If you were to take this 24-hour cycle and look at it as one giant daily candlestick, have you ever wondered how the tick, how the wicks and how the tails are created on a candlestick? Think about it. The body of the candlestick is determined by the opening price. Okay? So you got your opening price here. Now watch what happens when I follow price action. Just keep your eye on the middle here. Just keep your eye focused here, okay? And pretend for a second that this wick doesn't matter, okay? This wick isn't printed yet. Just keep your eyes focused right here and watch the red box go up, okay? Watch it go up and down. This is the candlestick just doing its thing. It's bearish right now. And then all of a sudden, it starts trading up. And it's green now. Okay, this is when we start getting excited. Oh, it's back down here. Oh, yes, it's green because we're bearish. We want it to trade up first. Otherwise, if we don't make a watermark high, how is this candlestick going to make a wick? Think about it logically. It's got to trick all these traders into going long before making the money printer model here and then slamming down so now that price is below open now it's a bearish candle it's red or black in my case so now we've got the open here the high and now we're holding for the low of the day here but it's not our job to get the absolute low we can wait for midnight Boop. and all of a sudden you've got this big giant bearish candlestick in the daily time frame and your understanding just of of how price moves just went absolutely through the roof this repeats every day okay there's something for you in this expansion from 7 to 11 a.m and can last up until four or even if you want to use midnight as the end of your day you can you know get a little make extra oomph out of there sometimes sometimes it's not so cool sometimes it's really rude and you know but you know at the end of the day creeps right back up to where would be your entry here or this bear flag here right because it traded up first stopped everyone out market structure shift retracement 786 not from here but from here because it made a new range so i would pull from here and you guys see me do this all the time and you ask me why don't you pull from the top that's why and then slams for liquidity down below <laughs> and then makes a money printer for the way back up and calls out the top and the bottom of the day. Fancy that. Friday. Fridays, you can find setups. They're tough to trade. Okay. But it's following the rules. You got a stop hunt here. Boop. You got a money printer here, right? You got your stop hunt here, 7 a.m. Boom. Breaking market structure. Retracement to a 786. What does that look like? Bam. So it following the rules, come on, you. Right there. 
<clears throat> going into a discount, making an inverted head and shoulders, bull flag, bull flag, bull flag, bigger bull flag, and then boom, pops up for, you know, 4 p.m., 3 to 4 p.m. Your your trades can last up until then. Um, oftentimes they will. But uh, there's the bottom of the day via money printer. There's the top of the day via money printer. And then it does nothing for the rest of the day. So while you guys who are actively searching for trades after, let's say, I don't know, 6 p.m., you're doing yourself such a disservice, you have no idea, okay? There's a reason why you're winning most of your trades in here. It's because it's easy. It's because this is when you're going to get dynamic price runs, okay? This is what we call rush hour. And, uh, I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. And then look at Saturday. Makes equal highs, runs them out. Makes equal lows, runs them out. Seek and destroy it. Just like I told you. Okay. Double top. Boom. Double bottom. Boom. Double top. Boom. Double bottom. Boom. Equal highs. Boom. Equal lows. Boom. <laughs> uh, now, if you know how to play Seek and Destroy, you can do well. But you have to know how to play Turtle Soup. And it's not a model. And I mean, just stay out of the markets. Go enjoy your lives. That's why we're here. We're traders. We came here to enjoy our lives. Now, again, that stop hunt can be before 7 a.m. Sometimes if it's there and it's obvious and you understand it, you can play it. Okay, but there it is following the same rules. Money printer, stop hunt, ugly bull flag, but then a nicer one here. Sammy called along. Breakout retest, boom, boom, bull flag, boom. So just a couple more examples here. Just following the rules, waiting for that stop hunt, the breaking market structure, and there's your sustained price run exactly at the time I tell you it's going to be every day if it's going to materialize. And then the rest of the day, while everybody else is getting wrecked, you're enjoying your life. There is no reason for you to be in the markets in here. Okay, London. I'm going to give you some rules for London right now because this is a beautiful example. If you are living on the other side of the pond or on the West Coast, often you can catch the high of the day in London, okay? If it's going to materialize, okay? So midnight, you're looking for price to immediately start trading up. Does the stop hunt. So there is your money printer model here, right in here. That little guy right in there. I know it's, you're like, it's not perfect though. I know, but once you understand that this repeats and you can trust it, I know it doesn't come up to a 786, okay? I get it. It's the SR flip version of this model. I don't know what to tell you. You either hit it or you wait for the next 786. Well, where's that? Well, it's right here. Oh, perfect. And that's the high of the day. And then it slams for the low of the day. Right, you're holding till about three, four p.m. If you don't get your targets, these targets were hit like gangbusters at noon, <laughs> and I believe Sam called it short here too. Off, I I love when he shorts bull flags, you guys. I just start howling because you know when you can do that, you've hit next level pro, and he's he's nailed it. But anyway, look at this garbage, garbage. Wednesday, look at this beauty. Now, this one was a little tricky, but still followed the rules, right? 7 a.m., stop hunt, boom, break in structure, an obvious one, and then it trades right down to a discount. And they go, master friend, I pulled from this low, and it didn't come to the 786. Okay, well, stop pulling from that low that the books tell you. Okay, oops, it was this guy right here. And this is a perfect example of when to show you what a swing low is, Okay. You see that little sneaky bugger right there? And there's not one other one other than this one here. Okay, it's this guy right there. And that was what was support there. So what is a swing low? Consists of three candles. I don't care what the books tell you. I don't care what Williams tells you. Okay, it's three. It's not five. It's three. Because on the fifth candle, you've missed the move. And this is way better. Okay, so it consists of three candles. You've got a lower low and a higher low on either side. It's very simple. Once this candle closes, you're expecting price to be bullish. And this is how you get a bullish bias. Based on, it's probably going to go and run out everybody's stop losses. So there's your double top. Price will then target the highest high, usually, typically, of the th three candles that created the swing low. The opposite is to be said about a swing high, but same thing, high 
lower high, either side, closure of this candle, you're targeting the low, okay? The higher time frames, the better. This is how you swing trade. It does not matter if these candles are up or down close. It does not matter wicks or, ta uh, wicks or tails, depending on what side, or bodies, okay? It just has to make that structure. And then we can anticipate upside. Okay, so let's see what happened here. So this is my swing low right there. You got a higher low on either side than that low right there. So I'm going to pull from that sneaky little guy right there. All the time, I'm never pulling from the absolute low. And this is why, because you could miss a trade and not ever get your 786. You could play the 618 if you want, but I just don't. So there you go. Just following the rules, money printer calling out the bottom of the day, rips up out of control, money printer calling out the top of the day. What happened? Well, we were in an uptrend. Uptrend, there's your bull flag, there's your model. It's time for price to run. Everything's cool. It can last till 4 p.m. When did this price run till 4 p.m.? Fancy that. Market structure shift. Okay, that's displacement. Takes out a swing low. Trend is over. Day's done. It's 4 p.m. Shutter down. If you want to catch a short and catch every fluctuation in price, then that's up to you. But once you just shut her down, okay? So you can see that a lot of these models materialize one after another after tricking the street money or very, very new trader into a certain direction at a certain time of day. The reason why Sam can just jump on the live and go, it's going this way now is because it's already done the stop hunt. Okay, if price doesn't start ripping by about 10, 15, 10, 30, the chances of it doing it for the rest of the day are pretty nil. It can, but it's pretty nil. So that's for your notes. I mean, if if you were looking for, so somebody was saying in the 99, yeah, I'm expecting expansion right away. Well, how did that work out? How did that work out? It didn't, it didn't do anything. It's the weekend, it's not going to do anything. And even if it does, who cares? But when you're ex expecting expansion on the weekend, you're not understanding time. Time runs price, okay? It's it's proven. It, it's not even arguable anymore. Time runs price. People wake up, they want to trade. If buying pressure helps you, then people will buy at certain times and everything will go up or sell, okay? And that's typically... 7 to 11 a.m. There is a 70% chance that you are going to get the high of the day in New York a.m. session and the low of the day in New York close. 70% chance. And that's not up for debate. It's not even arguable. It's a fact. So go and study this. And now you are applying risk management to your trading plan. Okay. So you've got a solid, solid session here that will hopefully kick your keister into high gear so that you can understand that buying and selling pressure in the one minute is absolutely ruining you and it's you know it's kind of punking you in a way because it's it's telling you to feel all these emotions when none of it ever mattered okay so one more thing before i shut this down is risk reward multiples. Okay. When you're studying your model, you're going to need to see and 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 have data. So you're going to go back test these things that I've given you, okay, in the times that I've given you. And you're going to go and see, okay, does my model usually hit a one-to-one -one and it has a 90% strike rate? Does my model have a 90 or 85% to 90 strike rate with a two-to-one R? Does it have a 70% strike rate with a five-to-one R? You can see that the more that you turn up your R multiple, the less likely you're going to hit terminus, or in other words, your full pole, right? The three to one R is great. It's great when you can frame a trade and three to one R is it, then that's great. So let's just, let's, 
let's do half of our trades. Okay, let's say we've taken 40 trades and this isn't back testing. This is your back testing told you that your model provided with a three to one R a total of let's say 78% win rate. So we'll round it up and say you got an 80% win rate in your back testing history. Okay. With a three to one risk reward. But you that doesn't mean your get past performance does not guarantee you future results. And also, even for myself, I've seen triple A plus grade setups and still screw them up for one reason or another. So you, let's just say that you're not going to hit all of your trades. So you're giving yourself some leniency here. Now, this will help you grow your mental capital within your capital size. Okay. When you are signing off on losing half of your trades, you have just totally dedicated yourself to what it means to be a professional. Now, in between this lecture, your back testing and you actually losing a trade, you're going to need to remember this because once the instinct of fight or flight mode kicks in, when you take it personally that somebody's taking your trade off the table, okay, you look at it as a, just an act of horror. And you think that people are out to get you and now you've hit instincts and, and fight or flight mode is kicked in and you need to get that back now. You need revenge now. That is toxic. Okay. When you lose a trade, you sit on your hands and you wait for the next day. You do not continue to keep going. That's, uh, you, you just don't. Okay. If, you, if, if your setup does not form by noon, the EST by the latest, you are not trading. How's that? Now I've just eliminated 90% of all your losses. Anyway, by having this data, you have now signed a contract with yourself. The guy you hired is you. You are the CEO of Me. Incorporated. You are the treasurer. You are the you're the everything, okay? And uh, this is why big companies hire people. So you've got a three to one risk reward, just as a standard, just to grow into for now, okay? So you've won 20 of your trades. So three times 20 is what? 60. So now you're up 60R. Okay, now one times 20 is 20. Why? Because one times 20 is 20. You're only ever risking 1%, right? It's three to one R. And I guess that would be risk. So you've taken 40 trades total and you won 20 out of them and you lost 20, right? But you're actually up. 60 R. Even though you lost 20, or excuse me, um, you're you're up 40 R, excuse me. You gotta subtract one from the other. Durr. You're still up 40 R. So in other words, if you were risking one dollar for three and you took 20 40 trades and you lost half of them you're still up 40 bucks this means that you can lose half your trades and still be up i know that this sounds way too good to be true and way too just like maybe even spiritually calming and overwhelming. Wow, I don't have to be a genius. I can actually lose half my trades, but here's the problem. You have to stop after you lose a trade and wait for the next setup. If you don't do that, none of this works. All of this is for nothing. And this right here is what is going to make you a profitable trader. We'll go through some of the comments now. There's probably lots. There's like a hundred of you here. Holy shnikey, 90 left. Nice. Nice. 
Hey friend, thanks for the surprise live stream. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, you guys. You're very welcome. Please show Sammy Cup and Andy. I, that the money printer is that's all it is. It's my refined version of the Sammy Cup and Andy of dubbed money printer. Because he plays it really in like the four hour time frames and higher. That was his model, his thing, and it bangs because that's just what price does when you play it in the higher time frames. And um, yeah, so you know. He was always like, you know, divergence, 786 retracement. Like his whole thing was beautiful. There was only a couple of things not missing, but a couple of things I was able to add to make it even more high probability, which is stop hunt and a breaking market structure, especially playing in the lower time frames. You're very welcome. Crazy K here. What's up, Crazy K? Two surfers surfing the same way from a different angle. Yeah, I mean, we're like, yeah, man. Yeah, we're like two snowboarders from different ends of the world. They speak totally different languages, but we're, but we, but, you know, it's hilarious. I was on the gondola at Kicking Horse Mountain, and there's an even higher chairlift up the mountains, all right? Like another chairlift after the chairlift. And the one lady wipes out. And everyone all over the world in different languages all went, oh, at the exact same time. And I mean, there was, we were all on the same page, you know, <laughs> we're all in the same snow and riding a different, it's just hilarious. We're riding the same hill, but we speak a different language. You know, and there's just a couple of things that help everything become more high probability and it's all time. I promise you, it's you just pay attention to when you're trading and when you shouldn't be trading. And I'll always, always tip my hand to you guys. It's, it's, I've made it part of my job to help protect those who want to listen and pay attention. Um, and will actually study these things that I share with you. And you have to click trading view. Yeah, thanks, buddy. That was awesome. So I hope I solved some things on leverage and what you're doing. If we were to use 200x leverage on previous example, wouldn't he be lick liquored since the trade wouldn't reach even a 5% stop loss? No, sir. No, sir. No matter what happens, my my trade will only ever lose the risk which is 850 dollars, and that is assuming that my stop loss is honored by the exchange which we know can be a little sketchy at sometimes right eye opening very good weeks will show you how show you how much for your chosen trade which is nice cool yes of course this is going to be recorded you're very welcome you're very welcome if going by the reduced position size by half after each loss, if you win after you lose or two, do you reset the original position size or do you increase by two and reverse your method? Yes, exactly. That's you. You is it for example, if you lost three trades in a row, now you're you're risking 025 percent, right? So you want to be if you win the previous loss or fifty percent of it at the very least, then you can go back to half a percent. And then the first loss, so you lost a thousand dollars, and now you're back up. Everything's cool. You regain that first thousand dollar loss plus the previous loss, and you're up. Now just yep, back to a uh, one percent risk. DMN's ICT toolkit, and I mean, there's a ton of day dividers that you can use and customize. You don't need, I mean, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Seek and destroy, baby. So even when price was trading here, I was mentioning how it was likely, or sorry, excuse me, here. I was mentioning I was likely to want to come into this double top and then raid the lows. And then I said, and then I asked, cause I'm, I don't look at the charts. Saturday is my day. I don't look at charts. I'll chill with you guys and look at your charts, but that's it. But anyway, here's the, the box there, raids the lows, reverses off the money printer. Here's your bull flag, ascending triangle, inverted head and shoulders. Everything is in there. And then boom. Because here's the deal, 
Okay. Everybody's so hooked on buying and selling pressure that they will see this as an SR flip. And if you don't believe me by now that the price is just running out people stops, I mean, I don't know what else to do for you, but there's the SR flip. Everybody's bearish. They see this as a bear flag. They're ignoring the bull flag after the stop hunt and everything that I teach you materializing just in a smaller range on a Saturday or Sunday, right? It's a yeah, Saturday and Sunday. It's just doing the same freaking thing over and over again. Let's seek and destroy. What do you guys call it? consolidation? Mind blowing. I hope so. I hope I irritated at least a couple of you guys. How did exactly did he decide to take that trade at that specific time? Because it it does it at the same time every day. You accidentally open a trade. Nah, I just changed my leverage and it went weird. It's all back now. It's all back. It's hilarious. I opened this position up here and it died. I got no liquidation price on this sucker. I can't get liquidated. 200x leverage. And I forgot to add to the trade when it was down. <laughs> Dork. Uh, yeah. Aha. One more thing too. This guy right here. Okay. This is our roadmap to trading. Okay. I know that you guys don't know about this. And this is one of the best things you can use in your expectations on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Okay. These economic news drivers will move price. As for example, last week on Thursday, when price freaked out at 8.30 a.m., we go to the economic calendar. Thursday, we go to 8.30 a.m. Oh, a big red news driver here called unemployment claims. And typically, that's the, that's the stop hunt. And then it will freak out. But last Thursday was just up and down, up and down. And then it went up. It was so annoying. That happens. And this is why I teach you guys... Wait 30 minutes after the news driver. That guy kept telling me that hindsight is 2020. No, I call this out because it repeats. Wait 30 minutes to look for a setup. And that was that short that I showed you. If you go back into the recording. Okay, so next week is the last week of the month. I'm expecting price to not do much. It could, but the last week of the month is just like the end of the day. It just, it seek and destroys. It's distributing orders. It picked up the beginning of the month. It's not a fun time. This is where I dial my risk back. Okay. So certain days, certain weeks of the month, if I need to trade, if I do see a setup, no model, no play, right? If the model shows up, I'll hit it. Why? Because I've already signed off on losing 20 of my trades. That means that I don't care if I lose 20 of them. So every time I take a loss, I'm like, yep, there you go. There's a loss. I finally get to count a loss. Boom. So these folders will help you so much. Next, So the last week of the month is when I even use 0.5% risk. I won't use 1%. I will even use a 250. If I got a $100,000 funded account, I will use $250 for a risk. 0.25%. Okay, I'm not... Trying to be a super hot shot. I just want to be consistent. And if my model hits, then I hit it. But if it's on like, you know, non-farm Friday, which is next week, okay? <laughs> non-farm, not for professionals, okay? It's used to say non-farm payroll because Wednesday is the employment change. I don't know why they changed it, but anyway, Friday is non-farm payroll, NFP, not for professionals. Thursday and Friday, the following week, do not trade. Okay, go and enjoy your lives, but we'll get into that later. Um, next week, end of the month, expecting chop. My risk will be dialed right back. I'm not going to be trying to force things. It's got to be obvious as it should be for you. You should know exactly what you're looking for. And so Monday we got, I don't put much weight on the durable goods. It, it could do something, but it's likely to just be a nothing burger. 10 a.m. on Tuesday, I'll be looking for a false move or a run on liquidity and then looking to reverse on all those traders chasing out that move. That's how it works. Wednesday, FOMC, Waller, and crude oil. This guy, he can hold price in consolidation usually. He's, a, he's not very important. And he talks a lot of nothing. 
Thursday, obviously, we have unemployment claims. We have this every friggin' week. I don't know why. Prelium GDP quarter, 8.30 a.m. So this is going to be a high probability setup that I'm going to want to pay attention to on Thursday. Friday, we have PCE. I love PCE. It's one of my favorite ones. Is this this week? Yeah, I was hoping so. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite ones. Price can absolutely move off of this um, 8.30 a.m. news driver and then uh, consumer sentiment. And yeah, this is going to be fun. Thursday, Friday is when I'm expecting the real movement. Kind of like last week, how we had Fed Chair Powell. I'm going to show you this once. So there can be no doubt. Okay, I'm going to show you this once right now. 10 a.m., Fed Chair Powell speaking last Friday, right? What happened last Friday? These red folders launch price. Okay, that's what moves price is the is the high impact news drivers. This is what people are missing in their analysis. I, I promise you, there's there's no ambiguity here. Okay, I'm not hiding anything. I'm not keeping anything from you. There's nothing more that you would ever need to learn from me other than this today. And you don't need to, you know, if you whatever. But this is it. Wait for. The run on liquidity at 10 a.m. Look at that, right at 10 a.m. Look at when price started freaking out, right? It was already did its little stop hunty poo down here earlier, but then price got its butt moving and made the bull flag and everything that I teach you materializing. <clears throat> Wait 30 minutes after the news driver to find yourself a setup, okay? Minimum 30 minutes. Let it be obvious to you, and you will do quite well. And just so you can see that specific one just a little bit better. Okay. Just let it be obvious and wait. And if you can see your swing low and your discount or your 786, maybe max pain, but there's stops here, remember? Dynamic price runs come from stop hunts. Bull flag right in here. Beauty, rising finger, parabolic, whatever you call it, and... There it is. Okay. Wait 30 minutes after these news drivers and you will do yourselves a lot of favors. And this is our roadmap to trading days. If you don't have any red folders, you're likely not going to get a lot of movement. And that's what I mean by this Waller holding price in the consolidation. Spend some time here. It's forexfactory.com slash calendar. Come to little golf tee here. Turn off the... Yellow and white folders, default view this week, apply filter, and there you are. Do you really use the one-minute time frame? Yeah. Yeah, if I'm trying to pinpoint entries, oh, yeah. But then again, I know exactly what I'm looking for when I'm looking for it. So we'll look for a divergence. Then I snap up. Yep, then pull a fib, buy on the 786 between hours of 7 and 11 a.m. Yes. Boom. And then Sam, and then so, because that's the bottom pattern, right? And then Sam will say on the live, banana curve 200, and you know you're on side. As soon as Sam says long, you know that money printer is the bottom, typically. Sometimes it's rude. I knew someone would screenshot. Don't worry, this is all recorded. Frank, can you show what indicator you use for the daily open? Yeah, there's lots of them. No model, no play. Yeah, exactly. I promise you this. What I've given you guys is the holy grail to trading. Okay. I, I Some of you, especially if you're new, you're not going to have a relationship for this. You're going to need to spend some time in with a plan. And maybe you need to learn the hard way and get wrecked. But... Eventually, you're going to realize that what I've given you here, people charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for. And you can just, you here you go, have it. Like, do well. Yeah, no, Sam's on point. Like, if him and I ever disagree, don't listen to me. $200 
too much information in my brain cells. That's fine. Like I said, you won't have a relationship with it. You're just going to have to spend some time, hang out, take your shoes off, stay a while. There are people doing this. If you're thinking in your mind like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Are people really doing this? I promise you there are people who are doing this, okay? So you can trade only with the one miniature? I mean, I just, you can trade in any time frame, dude. Everything is fractal, okay? Price is fractal. It doesn't do anything in the one month that it doesn't do in the one second. It's all the same thing, dude. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I, that's going to take some time for you to understand, but, you know. How often do we get divergences before the stop one? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't just something for you to study if you want. I just wait for the stop one. Yeah, you're very welcome. Slow burner. Oh, no, I won't do it again, Andrew. You can watch the video. I promise you that this is timeless. It repeats every day, open, low, high, close. That's, you go to the very first candlestick ever, and you will see open, low, high, close. Very well taught. Use a follow. You know your ish. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Love listening to your classes. Word up. Don't know when to catch the next bottom. Mm, just wait for a very spooky dip where everybody starts saying short. That's when you buy. You're very welcome. We'll be posting live course. Course. Thanks for your time, sir. I learned so much. Really, you're very welcome. Thanks, man. I was in Sam class yesterday. Now great fits. And now this so grateful. You're very welcome, man. Yeah, him and I complement each other quite nicely. It's uh, it's pretty cool. You have a great voice. I thought Ray... <laughs> That's awesome, dude, man. Thanks. I don't sound too Canadian, Harry. Awesome info. You're very welcome. After this, now I feel I can risk all I have. <laughs> uh, you're funny. <laughs> Yeah, you're very welcome, you guys. Does this also work with S&P? Of course, man. It works even better. My wife said you sound like Lifer, but if he was intoxicated. Huh. An intoxicated Sam. Shout out to everybody and thanks for coming in on the live. Thanks, friend. How do you change New York time on trading view if you have time? Thank you, brother. You just go to this little clock right down in your bottom right, and you go to negative four. Now, when this, when the daylight savings kicks in, it's going to be five. UTC negative five New York. And that's it right there. Do you mean Bitcoin will go below 4,800 again? I don't know, man. I don't give a flying rat's piney what price bitcoin is i really don't it could be at five dollars it could be at five million dollars it don't matter to me all i do is buy the dip i want to buy xrp with five x levers on the next bottom if we get it yeah. well send it bro find your model find your model in the four hour of the daily time frame and then then you can then then there you go because price repeats and I mean, stay the heck away from XRP, bro. That thing is garbage. My first one of these Zooms. I'm very impressed, man. Thank you so much. You're helping me find some blind spots already. There you go. That's exactly what I desire. Disconnect a couple of bridges. I'm sure one of these guys will give it to you in here, buddy. Oh, yeah. This has possibly been the most productive hour I've spent learning since I started trading, not just because of the money printer model. It helped me frame things in a better way. Also, you're getting up at 4 a.m. every day, man. I mean, up at 5.30. Well, I'm on the West Coast, so yeah, I got to wake up early, but I'm doing like 5.30. You know, that first news driver, which is what I'm looking for on the, you know, buying people stop losses, which is the nuts and bolts to how I trade, um, 
it started, you know, I can be up at 530 and then I'm waiting half an hour after the news driver, just like I teach all of you. So I could sleep in another 15 minutes or so. And then of course I'd be looking for my model, which takes another, maybe another 45 minutes. So now I set a little uh, 15 minute timer on my phone and just keep snoozing. <laughs> Because I'm I'm typically not trading anything less than a 15 minute chart, but sometimes I trade the 15 second chart depending if uh, the things I want to see are perfect. Yeah, price could probably dive. It doesn't matter if it does. It's more what am I going to do when it does. That's the important thing. Everybody wants to catch a short. I don't know why you guys wouldn't just want to buy a dip. I, you guys trying to catch the top of Bitcoin and trying to catch a short make me hilarious. Instead of being excited and being an emotional trader trying to catch the top, what if it happens if you buy a dip? Instead of listening to all these YouTube gurus that told you you were in a downtrend here, you could have bought that dip. I did it. That dip. I did it. That dip, me and Breadman did it. That dip, that dip, I didn't buy that one. I bought this little flag right there, just how I teach you. Stop, hunt, bull flag, boom. That dip there, another bull flag, and we sent this thing on the moon. That dip there, that dip there, that dip there. It's just like, it's like, why would you want to try and catch a short when you can just be buying dips? Guys, are, you guys make me laugh. Bitcoin can't possibly go up any higher. Boom, full port, no stop loss, 200x leverage. Let's go. Last week took no trade. Ooh, I spent every day watching the Master Friends courses, simple strategy, but a lot of discipline needed. Thanks, boss. Yes, to wait for the <laughs> your model. I waited three weeks for this trade. You guys watched me. Uh, yeah, this guy here and this guy here, like... Waited for so long for that guy. Well, thank you. Brenda, I'll have this for you all day. Friends, so we use the 12 as midnight as the start of our day, which this model correct. Best times of day are 7 11 a.m. Thanks for your time putting this video together. Yes, exactly. You're very welcome. Now, word up, Michael Lee. E. Don't worry about it. I appreciate your time lesson again on a day you could be spending with your family. Oh yeah, we did that. We did that. My kids like playing with toys and trains and wife's doing her thing. Oh yeah. You guys, you know, a lot of people, you know, if you're new here, you don't know this, but I was pretty, pretty bored with life before I joined the 99. I did a lot of cool things and I'm just like, you know, what next? So you guys give me purpose. And I love you guys. Do you use Bilfin at all? Nope. I'm costing myself money trading here. It seems like my gains are smaller on there. Yeah, fees suck, man. I trade I trade Forex CFDs. Um, I barely trade exchanges anymore. I'm funded out the wazoo. So I just trade the Forex market and there's crypto and Forex. So I just trade there. Less fees, less steal your coiny. And yeah. You're very welcome, uh, Pack Bandits. See, I knew somebody would give it to you. There it is. We're on the West Coast on the island here. Yeah, me too, man. Shut up. You're really on the island? Oh, man. That's hilarious, dude. Send me a DM, man. I'll never DM you first, but send me a DM. Let's, uh... <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, you and Sam give us purpose. Ah, just a little bit of hope in the right direction is all you needed. There's so much trash and scum out there. Oh man, I, I you, this this place is really really legit unique. There's there's nothing else like it, and that's why I stayed is because the love here is real, and you know the the. The people are real. The grind is real. Everybody's after the same thing. And, you know, it's a great community. And it's an honor to be teaching such awesome people. Okay. 
don't put me on no big giant pedestal, okay? I'm only a few years ahead of you guys. That's it. That's all I have on you guys is time, okay? You're probably way better looking than me. You're probably way better fit, you know? Everybody can be jealous about somebody about something, you know? So don't compare yourselves to anybody, especially in the 99. Keep that, keep just, you're on your own little learning curve and you, you're going to make it. Okay, I'm just a dude transferring knowledge and like I said, the stuff repeats, it's transferable and you guys now have something rock solid for moving forward. And uh, we'll see you guys in the 99. God bless you all. Thank you for joining. I hope you found this insightful. I'll talk to you soon.